Hello, and welcome to our special presentation with the Pillowcase Project, a part of American Red Cross Disaster Preparedness. We have Katrell Bush and Alexander Poku with us today to give our presentation. They'll be uh, walking us through some slides and, and telling us about their program. We're really excited to have you both here today. Good morning. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Melissa. Thank you, Katrell. Melissa. We're so excited. So today we are going to be doing the pillowcase project. I don't know if you, Melissa, is there anything else that you wanted to say about it before we get going? You know, I'll just give a reminder that you will receive this video in a follow-up email. It will also be posted in the online community. Um, and if you have any questions or, or things that you need after the presentation or after viewing the video, you can email me. Uh, you'll have my email address and you know, don't hesitate to reach out so we can get you connected to the resources that you need. All right. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. Hi, Catriel. How are you Hi. doing? Hi. All right. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. So, yes, we are very here. excited. Yeah, we're very excited to be here today. And we're going to do the pillowcase project again. Catriel is an expert, and I've been learning a lot from her. We've been having a lot of fun teaching pillowcase, right, Catriel? It is one of the most fun things, especially the home fire section. That's the part I like the most. That's right. And today we are going to talk about it. So yes, we're going to talk about, about the Pillowcase Project. And what is the Pillowcase Project? Deidre, do you want to tell them? What yeah, I was just going to say, I would love to talk about what the Pillowcase Project is. So what a lot of people don't realize is when Hurricane Katrina, unfortunately, hit our nation, um, primarily in the southern states like Louisiana, New Orleans. Um, so a bunch of college students, they were really panicked and they needed to get out of their dorms very quickly. And usually in a state of crisis emergency like that, it's very sudden and you have to get going as soon as you can. So in order to pick up their most necessary items, the things that they needed the most, can't live without. Um, they didn't have time to put together a duffel bag or a backpack. They really just had to grab whatever was in sight and get going um, to evacuate. So what they ended up doing was taking the pillowcases off of their pillows, which is really ingenious, and just stuffing their most necessary items, such as like toothbrush, um, like their cell phone, a charger, their laptop, maybe things like that, that were in within reach that they couldn't like live without that were going to be getting them through the next like few days. Um, so they're throwing all of that stuff in there and then they're getting out of the dorms to evacuate to safety. So some of our partners, they saw these brilliant students doing this and they were like, hold on, we should like make this a thing. This is so smart. We can get so many students and reach so many people in the US that have pillowcases or can get some and use this in the time of a crisis. Maybe not always during a catastrophic hurricane like Katrina, but just for other emergencies as well. So today we're sort of going to be introducing everyone, um, you know, what goes into the pillowcase, why it's necessary. And we're going to talk about, you know, something very important across the world, which is home fires. Um, so Alex, do you kind of want to give us some more details from there? Yeah, you know, you're right, Katriel. And since you were saying it was college students, I was thinking the things that was going to be the most important to them was going to be their like their books, right? Their school right. books. <laughs> but yeah, they're true. really thinking about school yeah. when they're trying to evacuate. So today we're going to talk about what you could put in there. Mm -hmm. Since you're not a college student yet, you could put a few things in your pillowcase that's important to you. And that could be anything. And guess what? I have my pillowcase right here. And Patriot, do you have a pillowcase with you? Because if you don't, I already win the challenge. Because if Catriel has a pillowcase, I'm going to challenge her to a pillowcase off. And if she doesn't win, she doesn't have hers, I'm going to show you what I've got in mind 
And Kid Trill, you have forfeited the challenge if you don't have yours. But because Kid Trill is at work right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what's in my pillowcase, why it's important, and what you could put in yours as well. But yes, first, we're going to talk about what an emergency is. What exactly is an emergency, Kid Trill? What does that mean when people are saying, oh, it's an emergency? Yeah, that is a great question. So it's a really big word. And it's basically expressing that it's something dangerous or or could be could be dangerous to a person, to families, or just the area, like buildings or parks, things like that. And these are things that um, could bring a lot of damage if they're if you if you don't get out of the area or if you know, the area is not prepared um, correctly, then it might be a really big issue. And that can have a lasting impact. People can get injured, things like that. So, you know, an emergency, very sudden, you got to jump into action, you got to do something, and you got to get safe. That's right. And if an emergency happens, there are two types. There is an act fast emergency. That's what my friend Bowen says. Act <laughs> fast. I mean, you got to act quickly. And there's another emergency where you have some time to get ready. We're going to talk about home fires and home fires is an act fast emergency. Mm -hmm. but let's meet first. I'm going to show you guys something right now. This one is just basically um, a map about all the different types of emergencies that happen around the country, around the United States. That's now, we all know, we all, that's right. We all know that the United States is huge and you can go from one place and it's really nice and warm and get to another place just a few hours later by plane and you get there and it's super cold, right? right. So there's lots of different emergencies that can happen in different places, right? So on this map, you can see very colorful, right, Catriel? What's yeah. your color on that map? I know she's going to say. Actually, Alex, you don't know me as well as you think you do. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the greens on this map. Greens, ah. So, Catriel, yeah. let's see. I see two different shades of green. There's a light green and a dark green. And if you're in a dark green state, which is all these states. I see Illinois, Mississippi, Tennessee, those are dark green states. Mm -hmm. What happen mm -hmm. in those states if you live in those states? Yeah, well, you know, I am using my eyes here and I know a little bit about maps because um, luckily I had some really great teachers that, <laughs> you know, showed me how those work and how to read them. So I see over here on the right side, there are these colorful squares um, and it looks like these squares sort of um, show different types of emergencies around the U.S. Would you say that's right? That's right. So yeah. on that box, it tells you with a matching color what's happening in those states and their colors. So yeah. dark green for you, Catriel, means you would be in Look out for some tornadoes and right. earthquakes. earthquakes. That's kind of crazy. That's crazy, and it could be very scary, too. But besides that, there is lots of other states like California. I love mm -hmm. California. And when you go to California, which is a dark blue state, mm -hmm. we see lots of different things, right? So mm -hmm. it's yes. earthquakes and wildfires. And then there are some parts of California that have big volcano. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different things happening there. But that's all across the country. They have all these things. Yeah. Texas. Texas has tornadoes and hurricanes. That is crazy. A lot of people don't realize that those things could be so different. That's right. And then for us, because Catriel and I both live in New York, we have the light blue color. And all the light blue states, we get hurricanes as our biggest weather threat. And that can be pretty scary when those things are happening, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of emergencies are happening. We need to be careful. But across the country, there are four types of emergencies that can happen no matter where you live, right? So really? 
Yeah, there's earthquakes and wildfires in one part of the country, hurricanes and other tornadoes in the middle, huh. all kinds of different things. But in every state, you can have flooding, you can have um, extreme winter storms. That is crazy. Even in California? And even in California, you can have a home fire, which is what we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah. Really dangerous mm -hmm. and you can have thunderstorms and lightning oh my god my I hate favorite. those i they're my least favorite because even though they can boom a lot and that part can be fun i don't know when the light comes on it's like and that can be pretty scary yeah. yeah me and my cat we just sit in my room and huddle together <laughs> and cuddle until <laughs> it's all over that's right. Now, when those things are happening, it can be pretty scary. So yeah. sometimes it's very important that we stay calm, right? Yes. We yes. have to be very calm all the time. Because when an emergency is happening, sometimes what happens to our heart? Mm -hmm. Our heartbeat is going so fast. fast. And when it goes so fast, sometimes you want to make choices. And you may not make the right choices. You may be in such a panic. You may pick up the wrong things. Oh, right? Yes. So that's what happens to me every morning before work. <laughs> that's right. Right. So sometimes people do that. You get a fast heart rate when you have a test come in, when you have a performance or something in front of your class, or if there's an emergency happening. So we need to slow down our heart. And yeah. Kate Phil, I know, is an expert because I've seen her tell kids how they can calm themselves down so that in an emergency, they can do the right thing. Right, Katria? What are some of the things you tell kids? Oh, okay. So there are a couple of things that we really like to um, teach to children. Um, and actually, they can really be done by anyone, Alex. That's true. Yeah. And so I always love telling the kids that I'm teaching, go ahead and share this with your friends that haven't seen this before. I would give you double points and I double dog dare you to share it with everyone at home or maybe in your neighborhood. Okay. So my personal favorite coping skill, and this is coping just means being able to deal with a difficult feeling, okay? So that can be nervousness or if you're scared, okay? And that's just when you know your feelings are really high and really overwhelming. Like Alex said, your heart is beating really fast. Maybe you're breathing really heavily. Um, and I know sometimes in things like fires, a lot of people, in, like, they want to just hide because that's what you do when you're scared, right? And so that is actually something we don't want people doing. And like we said, when you are really, really scared, you can't make the right choices. And hiding in an emergency may not be the right choice. So in order to get ourselves to calm down so we could be really smart about what to do, we're going to learn something called a coping skill. And this one in particular is called breathing with colors. Alex, have you heard of this one before? Oh, I've heard it and I've seen you do it and I love it. It's taking <laughs> your favorite color out of the color wheel. So look at this color wheel. There are so many different colors, so many shades of blue and red and pink and yellow and green. Mm -hmm. And every time we ask a child or a kid, what's your favorite color? They usually all say blue or they say, oh, I like cyan or <laughs> anything to do with blue, right? <clears throat> well, look at this color wheel and I want you all to imagine your favorite color right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that our favorite colors can sometimes make us feel good, right? So when we have our favorite color and things, it's like, yeah, I've got it now. That's my, that's what I wanted right along. Now yeah. that can calm you down. Or you can even think of something that even is in your favorite color, 
but it's so peaceful, like a blue, calm ocean, or a nice bright blue sky, or yeah. even bright yellow sun and the different colors and the flowers. So many things can make you feel nice and calm. So when you I think usually about, think about being in a park. Ooh. Because so, you like because you like green. Because I like green. Right. Right. <laughs> So, so that's I my like, happy, peaceful yeah, color. <laughs> that's right. So now let's think about it. So Catriel, let's do a little exercise with people. Let's see what happens. What could we do to make ourselves feel like the colors we like most and get rid of a color that's making us feel all anxious and nervous and scared? What could we do? Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for laying that out for us. You are exactly right, Alex. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, we're, as he pointed out before, we're going to think about our favorite color or color that we think is very calm. So you can think about um, your the color of your dog or maybe the color of your bed. Those things can be really comforting and calming. And so, like I said, my favorite color is green and I picture that as in a park with a lot of trees around and there's a lot of grass um, and I'm just laying on my picnic blanket and just looking at the sky and so for me that's a really calming space to be in so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to inhale or breathe in all that happiness all that happy feeling and so I'm also picturing the color green and that happy place that I think about with green. And so what I want you guys to try with me, you don't have to, but I think it'd be a good idea to try because then once you try it, you'll be really good at it when you definitely need it. So let's all together, let's first make sure both of our feet are on the ground. And I want everyone to sit up nice and straight. Okay. And if you can, take one of your hands and place it over your heart. And take your other hand and put it on top of that one. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of feel your heart beating. You feel yourself breathing, your chest rising and falling. Feels really good. Feels like you're really with your body. And so while we do this, I want you guys to breathe in. And Alex, if you could do this with me, that would be so awesome. I'm ready. Yes. Okay. So I'm picturing my park. I'm picturing green. And I'm breathing that in. Okay. So I'm going to take a deep breath in right now. I'm going to hold it for a second. And then I'm going to breathe out nice and slow. Okay. So now that we know what to do when we're breathing in, I'm going to talk about what we do when we're breathing out. If you can believe it, we're doing something even while we're breathing out. So because I feel nervous and scared, I kind of want to push away those scary feelings. And so to do that, I'm going to think of my least favorite color, which is orange. And I know that's an unpopular opinion. It's going, I'm going to get a lot of people mad at me for this. I'll probably get some weird letters and emails for saying I don't like orange. But for me, that's a color that makes me feel icky and like, ooh, scary. So <laughs> I'm going to think, okay, I'm in an emergency. Let's say I heard there's a huge winter storm coming and my house is not prepared for a winter storm. And so I'm panicking. What do I do? How am I going to survive this winter storm? Okay. What about my family? And so all of those nervous thoughts, I'm going to picture them as the color orange. Okay. And so that is what I want to be pushing out of my body. I want to push it out. And so that's going to be Okay, and you can even make a noise when you do it. Sometimes that helps. 
So together, we're going to breathe in our happy, calming color. We're going to hold it for a second, and then we're going to breathe out nice and deep, and we're going to think about that really gross, sort of icky color, and that should make us feel a lot better once we do it a few times. So together, let's keep our hands together on our chest. Okay. Let's close our eyes. And together, let's take a deep breath in right now. I'm thinking of green in the park, holding it. And I'm breathing out really slow. All that icky feeling, that orange. I see it. I see my orange breath coming out. And so we're going to do it a couple more times. Deep breath in. Hold and deep breath out. And let's do it just one more time. Hold. Deep breath out. And slowly open your eyes and you can take your hands and put them palms up like this in your lap, on your legs, okay? Wow. And that sort of will make you feel calm and you'll even feel like your hands are lighter and, and your head feels a lot better. And you'll notice your heart isn't beating so hard, so fast anymore. And now I know I can make the right decision or try to now because I am calm and ready to go. Wow, that is incredible. And everybody, I know k was using green, but in my head, I was using pink. I was breathing in pink and I was breathing out orange, just like she said. And that worked. Right. It is such a great idea. And I know you don't have sometimes in an act fast emergency, you may not have time to sit down and do all that. But right. if you remember that you just got to be able to take in those deep breaths and then exhale right from your gut, your heart will begin to slow down and then you can make the choices you need to. Right. Yes. And Alex. Yes. Another big part of that in act fast emergencies is being like really skilled almost or, or you know, knowing what to do, maybe even practicing before that sort of emergency happens, because then it's kind of automatic. You know, I don't right. want to say like riding a bike, um, but, you know, as easy as rolling out of bed. And you know what your your body just knows what to do, you know? Yeah, I roll out of bed very slowly just to be very careful, right? So that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is right. Now that k has taught us about how we can handle an emergency, we've learned a lot. And we want to remind you, we want you to share this with everybody you know right? Your friends, your family, your siblings, your grandma, your grandpa, every grown-up that you know, teach them this stuff because not every grown-up knows this stuff. So it's very important that we learn something, we practice how to do things, just like Adriel said, and then we share with everybody because then we spread the joy, right? So That's that is right. Part So now we want to talk about home bias because we've been saying that that is one of the things that can happen no matter where you live. Now, yeah. home fire, yeah, home fire is very dangerous, right, Hadriel? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is an act fast emergency. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, you have to act so fast. Sometimes you may not have time to grab that pillowcase that got all the stuff in there that you want. Oh my God. That's right. Oh. It can be that quick. Now, an act fast emergency like a home fire can happen very quickly. So we want to remind people, there are a few things that grownups have in every home that we live in, right? That we should have one. And that is what's going to warn us if there is a home fire. Oh, I what think I know what you're talking about here. That's right. I'm picking up on it. <laughs> and look at this. Uh -huh. Sound the alarm. Right. I think, I think that's what this is right here. That's right. 
That it's is in- <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it's got a hand pushing a finger pushing the button to test the alarm. Yes. Now, every one of us should have a, a, a smoke alarm or a fire alarm, or however you want to call it, up on our ceiling where we sleep, right? Yes. Wherever we yes. sleep, we should definitely have one because it's the first thing that warns us that there's a fire. Right, Adriel? Yeah, I know if I was asleep or 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 in the other room, um playing a game. I would yeah, I, I would need to know if the candle I left burning in my bedroom toppled over or one of my plants caught fire because of it. These are the things that you know I would need to know to make sure that I can. Ah, that's right. And when a smoke alarm goes off, guess what, everybody? How much time do you think you have? Adriel, would I have enough time if a smoke alarm is going off and there was an actual fire? I know I don't have a lot of hair, so I don't have to worry about it, like going to fix my hair to make sure I look good. Right, but right, right. That would you, be my concern. But you, but do I, you do no, You know, I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it, and I don't think that I would have time for that. I heard something crazy that a home can burn down in five minutes. Oh, it's is probably that- it's probably very dangerous, right? Even if the home is gonna burn, we want you to know you only have about what two minutes, two minutes. to get out. Because in two minutes, that fire can be 16 times the size it was when it started. And not only that, that's right. Not only that, it can block the way you need to get out. So the minute you hear your smoke alarm, you've got to find an exit and you've got to get out quickly. You only got two minutes and that's not a lot of time. As a matter of fact, we're going to show you guys this map. Now, this map is a map of what a typical household may look like, right? You Mm -hmm. may have some bedrooms. You may have a bathroom, a kitchen, and a living room. There's a lot of spaces to think about. That's right. You can be in any one of them. You can be in a bedroom or a bathroom. So let's pretend that maybe Catriel and I are in this house, right? And she's in her bedroom, and I'm in my bedroom. and Look at this. There's a meet here. So that's a meeting place. That's very interesting. We need to find out what that's about. So there's a lot of bedrooms. There's escape paths. There's a red arrows and blue arrows. And the first one are the red arrows. The red arrows are telling us those are doorways. Those are mm-hmm. doorways. Which is a good thing, right? Well, because yeah, you walk I out of the that. door. Yeah. Yeah. And the blue arrows are windows. Okay. So that's a good idea, right? Yeah. And in every bedroom, there was a door and a window. So if I cannot get out of the door, I can surely hopefully get out of the window, right? So that could be two areas that I need to get out of. Yes. A window or a doorway. And then you get outside, you've got to go to a meeting place. Now, a meeting place is very, very important, right? Oh, right. yes. You know? Why do we need a, a meeting of- I don't think a lot of people think about a meeting place. No. Even when they do a fire drill. That's right. You know? I think so. A meeting place is a really great idea, though, because, Alex, if you somehow get out of the kitchen, either through the window or the front door, but I'm in my bedroom and I, I can't go out the red arrow way through the doorway. I have to leave through the window. We're on opposite ends of the house. How would I know that you got out safely? That's right. The only way we will know. Meeting place. So that you go to the tree. I go to the tree. And we're like, yay, we both made it. And then, you know, we had called 911 before. So firefighters come and they are able, we're able to tell them, oh, Thank goodness. Don't worry, firefighters. Everyone had made it out of the house safely. But Alex, why would, what's another reason why 
you know, it would be important to have a meeting place. And, you know, if we needed to tell the firefighter something. That's right. It's very important to have a meeting place because once you get to a meeting place, you cannot leave your meeting place. Right. right? So if somebody forgets where we're supposed to meet in this place, it's the tree. If Patriot didn't go to the tree and she might still be in her bedroom, I can't go back into the household to try and get her. Mm -hmm. I stay by the tree because mm -hmm. once the firefighters get there, they can, t I can tell them where Catriel is and then yeah. they can go and get her. If yeah. I go back in there, what happens, Catriel, if I go back in there to try and look for you myself? Oh my gosh, Alex, it's a really bad idea. See, bad it's choice. Yes. Because if I hadn't calmed down a little bit outside at my meeting place, and then I decided, oh, Alex is in here. I gotta, I gotta go and find him because how how will I know? What if the firefighters don't find him or go in right away? So going back inside, remember when we said that a fire can what double in 16 or it can get 16 times bigger, right? So by the time I get outside and I make the choice to go back inside, imagine that's about a minute that went by. Imagine how big the fire is then. So going back inside and all that smoke that you would breathe in, it's so dangerous and you can pass out or it can be so much more dangerous where fire might be very close to you and then you're trapped in the house. So going back inside is never a good idea. And Alex, I don't know about you, but I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a firefighter. <laughs> I'm not a firefighter either. And I know firefighters have special equipment to be able to put out a fire. And yeah. another thing that I learned, even firefighters, when they go to fight fire, sometimes they have to get low and go. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, I've heard go. about this before. That's right. So yeah. firefighters do the same thing we would do if we see smoke. If we see smoke when we're escaping a fire, we need to get low and go because smoke goes up. And most of the fresh air is at the bottom. It's at the bottom. So even though firefighters have all that equipment, even they get low and go to get to safety. So we have to remember that. If a fire starts and we hear our smoke alarm, we have only two minutes. When we are going through any areas that we see smoke, we shouldn't run right through it. Right. Get low and go. And then once we get outside to our meeting spot, we've got to stay out. We mm -hmm. never go back in, right? Now I know, Every kid knows about stop, drop, and roll. We want to remind you. Right. Nah, you got to stop, drop, and roll. Get low and go. And if you get out, stay out. Do yes. Back in, right? Yes. That's Those are the things. most important things. And meet at your meeting place. That's right. Now, what if there was an act fast emergency like a pillow, um, like a fire? What about my pillowcase? Remember, I said it's got a lot of yeah. stuff. What should I do? Should I go and look for my I go look for it, though? You don't really have time to go look for anything, to be honest. I don't think I'd even stop to get dressed. I think I'd just run out in my PJs or something. That's true. And I know another thing. We talked about the smoke alarms, and we said, so when the smoke alarm is going off, now there are smoke alarms in every room that you sleep, right? What about mm -hmm. the kitchen? If there's going to be a fire, isn't the fire going to start in the kitchen? Should we have a smoke alarm in the kitchen? Most of the time, fires do happen in, you know, begin in the kitchen. But, you know, when I'm cooking eggs or making dinner, sometimes I have a little bit of smoke from the pan. So, the smoke alarm ends up going off, but it's not, it's not a real dangerous fire. It's just some smoke from when I'm cooking. Um, and so I would say it's 
not the best idea to have a smoke alarm right in the kitchen, but maybe nearby, just outside of the kitchen is a good idea. Right. There should be one on every level of your home and there should be one in every room that you should sleep in, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you get outside, remember, you've got to call 911, mm -hmm. stay out and not go back in. And you've got to remember your meeting place. Those are very important things to do and stay mm -hmm. So that's quite a lot of stuff. So if there's a home fire happening, two minutes or less. That's right. No time to change my shirt or get all prettied up or anything like that, right? I got to get- I know you like to, you know, get <laughs> all prettied up to go outside, but yeah. you're not going to have time for that. I won't have time for that. No one has time no. for that. <laughs> now we've talked about all the emergencies and all the different things that happen and we talked about a pillowcase now a pillowcase is a great idea because we didn't want to call this the backpack project right, right? That's because not maybe not everybody had a cool. backpack That's yeah right. <laughs> so a pillowcase most people have pillowcases right you have it on your pillows so you can always use something like that but Luckily for everybody, the Red Cross also gives out the pillowcase once you get a pillowcase project and you mm. get to see it, right? But we're going to show you what's some of the good things to have in a pillowcase, right? So oh, let's I would see. love to know. Oh, wouldn't you like to see this? I've got some goodies in here. Things that I think are very important for just me and things that are very important that everybody could use, right? Oh, so, okay. What do you so think? So, for my pillowcase. So what do you think? What do you usually have in your pillowcase, Catriel? Let me see if I have those same type of things. Okay. Okay. We'll do a little bit of a, a quiz here. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I can be really clumsy, especially in an emergency. I think I would want to have like some band-aids or or maybe a first aid kit. Guess what, Catriel? I have a first aid kit. Oh, my God. I do have one in my pillowcase because it's a very good thing. Sometimes when you're escaping a fire, one of the things that you have to do is you have to make sure that before you open any door, you always touch with the back of your hand on the door handle to see if it's hot. And if right. it's hot, you cannot open it. But sometimes mm. people make a mistake and they touch it with the palm of their hand. Now, the That's palm what I should do. Yeah, it could take a little while before you feel that it's hot. And by that time, you may have hurt the palm of your hand. But the back of your hand is so sensitive. When you yeah. touch it, you know right away. So if you have an emergency like that, and if you have used the wrong part of your body, or you've hurt yourself because you were acting fast and you hurt yourself, it's a good idea to have a first aid kit in your pillowcase, right? Yeah. What, what else do you have? I'm curious. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. I I would think I'd want some water. That's a great idea. And guess what? Everybody needs water, water after like something really crazy is happening. That's right. And I have a bottle of water in my pillowcase as well, which is a great thing. Now wait, Catriel, if I have a bottle of water in my pillowcase and there was a fire. Would yeah. it be a good idea for me to try and put out the fire with my bottle of water? Um, I I think I'm going to say no because so. it's, it would take a ton of water and only firefighters have that. That's right. And this also, is I want to save that enough. to drink. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to save that to water. drink the water. <laughs> So I'm going to put that water aside. And guess what else I have? That's very good to have. I'm going to show you this. Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. Right. A flashlight. A flashlight is a very good idea to have because you can use it to see where you're going. And yeah. even important, if you're in a building that's on fire, sometimes yeah. you may not be able to get out because there's too much smoke or the door is hot. When you go to your window, you can signal firefighters yeah. by turning on your flashlight so that they get attention, right? You, you can look around. Stuff. So that when firefighters get on the scene and they see a fire, 
firefighters look at every window and guess what? If you're standing there with your flashlight or if you have something bright that you can put out of the window, mm. firefighters can know where you are so that they can come to you for help to help you out, right? So those so are all things that happen. That's right. Let's see. And you know what? If you get outside in a safe spot, sometimes in an act fast emergency, you might need some food. And guess what I've got? Oh, I love mac and cheese. Love mac and cheese. But you know what? The other day when I was packing my pillowcase and I thought mac and cheese is my favorite, is it really a good idea for me to have mac and cheese, Catrio? Well, I have the bottle of water. But I don't think I would have a stove or a microwave or even a bowl. So Mm. probably not the best thing to put in my pillowcase. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something like um, some granola bars or like uh, maybe like a a bag of chips or pretzels. That's right. So something that isn't going to go bad, but I don't need like milk and a stove and fire and all that stuff to cook it, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe a mac and cheese, a box of mac and cheese, even though it's my favorite, may not be the best thing to have, right? Okay, I agree with that one. Yeah. But I know one thing that everybody loves. Yeah. It's something that is special to just them, right? Oh, and okay. Guess, guess what I have as my second favorite? Oh my God, is that Baby Yoda? It's Baby Yoda, that's right. Oh I have Baby God. Yoda with me. Now, why would I have Baby Yoda with me? Baby Yoda is awesome because he can keep me calm. We talk about staying calm and making sure your heart beats right nice and slow during an act fast emergency. Maybe after the emergency has happened, you're a little nervous and grownups are busy doing the things that they need to do to get you back to safety again. Yeah. you take your baby Yoda or anything that makes you feel calm. It could be baby Yoda or it could be a game on a tablet or something. Oh, that's so right? smart. That's right. And then you have those things readily available to you at all times. And baby Yoda is awesome at keeping me calm because I yeah. love baby Yoda and it's cool. But I'm going to show you one more thing. Which you is- have more? I have more, Adriel. Look at this. <gasps> I have one of those. That's right, everybody. I have a whistle, and a whistle is very important, right? In an emergency, especially if it's an emergency that we know is going to be happening, like the bad weather we talked about, a tornado or a hurricane, anything like that. If yeah. You- Please have the whistle with you. You can put it in your pocket. You can put it around your neck and then you have it with you in case anything happens. You can always get attention. So instead of screaming, which if you scream a lot, what happens to your voice? Mm -hmm. It gets pretty dangerous. Right. I can't scream for very long. So that's why I bought a whistle. That's right. So look. I'm putting all these things back into my pillowcase. Well, maybe except for the mac and cheese. Maybe we hang on to the mac and cheese. Maybe that would be good lunch today. I don't know. It might be a good idea. (laughs) I'm going to put my water back in there. I'm going to put my first aid kit. I'm going to put my game, my tablet back in there. And guess where I'm going to keep this pillowcase? Um, I keep it. By your bed, I would hope. And right. I'm going to keep it wherever I'm going to sleep. So that it's good to go. And when you have a pillowcase like this, my pillowcase has a nice fancy drawing of some cool characters. And yeah. it talks about all the different things that could go in here. It has toothbrush and toothpaste, some soap. Wow. A favorite blanket, a paper and a pen. You want to keep all this stuff in there. And I'm going to keep it in the room where I sleep. And it's going to be ready to go. But remember... It's not the most important thing. In an act of yeah. emergency, I you have- You are the most important thing. You are the most important thing. Things can be replaced. Exactly. There's only one of you. 
So we've talked about so many things, Melissa, and everybody that has joined us. I hope you've learned a lot, but I don't want to just get off the screen until we do a quick quiz, right? What do you think? That's right. That's right. Melissa, would you like to take our quiz? I am curious. If we ask Absolutely. you some questions, you're going to take it? All right. So let's see. Melissa, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to ask you a couple of quizzes, right? A couple of questions. It says, all right. Quickly, should you get outside when you practice for a home fire? So if you are going to practice, how much time do you think it's important for you to get outside? So this is a multiple quiz choice question, right? So you have to guess. So the first one is A, less than two minutes. B, 10 minutes or more. Oh, 10 minutes. Hmm. I would one love to hour. take 10 minutes. C, <laughs> one hour. That's like taking a shower and getting ready and everything. All right. Yeah. Well, you don't know, Melissa. What do you think? Is it A, two minutes or less? B, 10 minutes or more? C, one hour or D, you don't know. Well, I was paying attention during your presentation. So I know the answer is A, two minutes or less to get out of my house if it's on fire. What do you, what do you wow. think? Israel? She is right. That's right, yeah. everybody. If He's been paying attention. That, yeah. If you guess that, that is correct. All right. It's going to get tougher from here on, Melissa. All okay. right. Number two says, what is the most important thing to do when you are escaping from a home plan? of home fire, right? Is it A, get your pillowcase kit? Ooh, that's going to be tough. Is it B, yeah. forget about your pillowcase kit. You need to get out as quickly and as fast and safely as possible or find your pet. Ooh, this mm. is very tricky. Mm. Or, or D, you don't know, Melissa. What do you think? Well, it's Eight. really tempting to go for my pillowcase or my pet, but I know the correct answer is B. The most important thing is to get out safely. That is correct. Yes. That is right, Melissa, right? So if you Perfect. got the right the answer was B, get out as safely and as quickly as possible. Now, yeah. what about this one? This is, I said this is getting tougher and tougher. Where should you have smoke alarms in your home? Ooh, is it A, mm -hmm. in the kitchen, beside the furnace, or near in a fireplace where those things give off smoke? That's tough. Is it B, on every level in, or in every bedroom and outside any areas that you sleep? What do you think? So in every bedroom, we talked about that, right? Uh, on every level, right? So if you have multiple levels in your home, it's good to have one there. Is it C, Oh, in the bathroom? Hmm. Or oh, is it D? You don't know. So A, in the kitchen, near anything that's like a furnace or that could have a fireplace that could have smoke always coming out. Is it B, on every level and in every bedroom? Is it C, in the bathroom? Or D, you don't know? Hmm. Well, I think the answer is B on every level outside every bedroom, because we want to make sure we can hear that if we're sleeping and we're not awake to see a fire start. I love it. And she's got it right again. She I am blown away. I am impressed. She really was listening. Yes. All right. So, all right. Another tough one, Melissa, what should you do to escape a home fire? Ooh, is it A, get out, stay out, and call 911? Ooh. Is it B, stop, look, and listen? Ooh, stop, look, and listen. Is it C, learn, practice, and share? Ooh. Ooh. Or is it D, you don't know? All that right. one's definitely A. That get out, great. stay out, and call 911. I yeah. thought that was going to be hard, but she knew <laughs> that I would get out and stay out and call 911. Okay, so now finally, and everybody, I want you to know, after listening to this and hearing Melissa give all the right answers so far, I'm curious. After all this pillowcase presentation and learning about slow-moving emergencies and act-fast emergencies, do you feel like you can be more 
prepared for emergency? Do you feel like you're feeling pretty good about an emergency if it happened? What about you, Melissa? What do you think? I definitely feel like I'm more prepared. It uh, It's very thorough and gives us a lot of information, but in very easy to understand terms. And I think that makes a big difference when we're talking about preparing our families for an emergency. Um, and you all made it fun too with that coping skills. So we know how to keep ourselves calm in the middle of an emergency. Um, because you're right, oftentimes the adults are busy doing the things they have to take care of to keep us safe and, and deal with the fire department or the police department. And, and we might be really wondering what's going to happen to us next and, and not know where we're going to go or where we're going to sleep. So um, having that coping activity is really helpful, I think. Well, um, I think yeah. so, too. And, and that was a great one, Katrio. Lying on the grass, looking at the blue sky, taking in deep breaths. I love that. So I'm definitely going to use that. I'm going to use that every time when I am feeling a little nervous. So I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you guys all had a lot of yes. fun too. Wherever you are, we want you to remember when you learn something, you got to practice it so you can be good at it. And then we want you to share it with everybody that you know so that they can learn it too. And that's right. That's right. And then we want you to remember, right? Tell your grown-ups about it the most, right? Because especially sometimes when we feel nervous and we don't want to worry our grown-ups, it's a grown-up's job to worry about you and to make okay. sure that you know what to do, right? So okay. don't think about, oh, your grown-ups are going to be worried about you and so you're not going to tell them. Tell them, all right? So I hope you had fun. I want to thank Melissa for having us do this and thank Kate. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank yes. you so much, Katriel. All right, Melissa. Back thank you. you. I want to thank Katriel and Alex for being here today for this amazing presentation. You'll all receive the follow-up email with some resources and a link to the video. It'll also be in the online community. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to programs.mvcn at redcross.org, and we will be happy to assist you. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, -bye. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.